Hi everybody, this is the last part of the Ionic serverless application uh, series here. Uh, so what we want to ultimately do is create something like this. And this is in the browser. I'll show what it looks like in the iPhone. But um, you want to be able to log in to your to-do app. Click log in, show up a little uh, loading um, indicator there and then just get a basic list of the to-do items there uh, be able to hit refresh and refresh the list uh, so if you want to see the source code for this uh, particular application you can go to Bitbucket and download um, or clone this uh, Apollo rock slash ionic to do and uh, just clone that and you can follow along the code and it should be working uh, as is as long as you go through like a couple of the other parts in order to set up uh, your development environment for Ionic and um, build and run uh, various things so let's go over a little bit of how to get to that point we'll start with home HTML and all of this is a uh, it's all angular and all of these markups are all um, components directives um, what are they called let's see what they're called it's called selectors so all of these um, elements here are all selectors uh, so the first one is ion header ion nav bar ion title home uh, these are all ion type angular components uh, that are declared um or that are the what are they called selectors for the ion component so this ion header is going to give you this part right here and um it's got an ion title home and then let me refresh this actually so we can go to this particular part uh and then we've got ion content which is like this inside part here and we've got a, our tab and tab icons uh, and then we also have um, another content called ion card and within here we're gonna have this login uh, area here <clears throat> this one has this is ngif this is a directive so when um, there's a component property called is logged in when you're not logged in this uh, login um, content is visible or this card is visible if you are logged in, then this other card is visible, which is just the to-do list that you saw earlier with a bunch of content in it. So this just consists of a couple of things. You have uh, a label, username, input, type, text. Uh, it's using username, the property of the component for this home um, component is, uh, What's it called this dope is this double binding here. So ng model equals to username input and output. So let's see password same thing. It's just got user password as a property. Then when you click on the login button, um, this button login, it's going to uh, call the on login method of the home component. And then once you've logged in, um, it's going to uh, display this on uh, this next card and it's going to hide the other card because as logged in will be true uh, but once you're logged in and you've set the component flag is logged in to true then it'll show this uh, this particular card it has the to-do list header there and we're going to iterate through the list of to-do items uh, that's within the component uh, and this is that what that ng4 is I'm just going to list out the names you'll probably make it fancier than this but we also have a um, another button here that does on refresh to do button or on refresh to do items. So if I go back to here and do login, um, it's going to um, refresh this whole list. When I click on refresh, it's going to display that to do list. So this card is now visible. The login card is not visible because I've logged in. All right, let's take a look at the code a little bit. Uh, home TS. Uh, what we've done here is we've added some properties to the home page component. We, we have username. 
user password is logged in. These two are uh, bound directly to our um, input uh, controls. And it initializes with kitty, kitty123 is logged in, is there, and that controls which card is visible. To do items is the list of items that we're iterating through uh, in home in the template, which is home.html. Uh, loading, login, loading, uh, these are uh, something from Ionic that you can uh, import. Um, we've got loading controller, loading, and all it is is that little um, pop-up that has the little waiting icon displayed. Um, <clears throat> but when the user clicks on login, it's not doing any validation. It's just uh, showing the loading for login. Uh, and then it's calling this login service, which um, I've added to the project. And it's taking the username, password, and it's doing this um, subscribe. When it's completed, it's going to call on login completed. On login fail, notice I'm calling bind with this because that's sort of how you have to call it in order for this call to the function uh, to behave properly. Uh, and it does this injection uh, for the constructor of the home page. So when um, Angular runs into this home page um, selector um, element, it's going to instantiate this component and it's going to automatically create these um, these private properties uh, and instantiate them from these particular classes. Uh, so let's take a look at this. Um, essentially, we'll take a look at these services later, but when you log in, uh, when login is completed, let's do function F12. Uh, on login completed, it's going to, actually before we get there, we need to show the, lo the loading for login. And all it's doing is it's creating the loading um, sort of um, component, the loading component for uh, loading, which is looks like this. It just goes in and takes the loading controller and creates that particular graphical GUI. And it has logging in as a text for that uh, loading. And then, let's see, I think we do we present that particular component. It doesn't automatically show up. And we just do present on it. Uh, and then once the login service call is completed, um, it's going to go in and do some, it's going to hide that loading uh, for login component. And it's going to update this login service, the token that it gets back from the server. And we'll take a look at that login service in a minute. But just sets login to true, which causes the login sort of card to disappear and show the to-do list card to appear. And then once we're logged in, then we want to go in and refresh um, the items that we got back. So it's going to do, uh, it's going to show the loading uh, component for the to-do items. And it's going to call this to do service, which was injected in our constructor. And once we get it, all it's doing is um, whatever the response back, it's a message that has the items in it. Just set the to do items, which is bound to the GUI, and it's iterating through the GUI or through this to do items or this component and um, creating the text, the name elements uh, within that list. Then if there's errors, you have to dismiss it as well. So that's basically how this login, uh, this home page works. You log in. Once you log in, you go in and display the list of things. And um, on refresh to do items, when, when the user clicks the refresh button, it, it also calls uh, that particular method. All right, so that's the uh, GUI part, uh, it's calling other services to do a lot of the other works, and we'll go over that next. All right, let's take a look at a, a couple of things that um, I created here. We've got the login service, we've got the to-do service. 
login service is responsible for um, logging in the user, communicating with uh, a, an, a, a gateway API, and um, sort of managing the authentication token that comes from uh, those calls. So um, we created this login service, and we've got its injectable. Um, it's expecting uh, an injection of this HTTP um, type here. Uh, it's coming from Angular. Um, it's not the native um, library that's coming from Ionic, but it's Angular. So it's keeping track of this authentication token. So when you log in, you provide username and password, and it's calling an AWS uh, API gateway authenticate um, method there, or not method, but resource. And it's calling, or it's using this, it's creating this um, object that has username taken from the parameter username, password, user, password. And it's doing this HTTP post, and it's doing this mapping. It takes the response from um, it takes a response from the API call and just converts it to JSON essentially, and then it's doing the observable. It's returning an observable, uh, and then once the client gets it in a home TS uh, on login, what it's going to do, and let's take a look at on login completed is it's going to uh, tell the service to go in and set the authentication token so it can use that token again when it's um, when other subsequent calls are done to to AWS uh, API gateways so get authentication token uh, or set authentication token just sets the property of this service to whatever was returned uh, from the initial call here, which is called by home TS. Um, see what's important here. Da, 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 da. Is login just determines if the token is not null or not undefined. So the to do service, when it's making a call, which um, home TS, let's see, where does it make it, the call from? It does on refresh. Let's see. On refresh token, it's calling this to do service get items. If you look at to do service, it's going to um, require the login service as well. Um, and there, there's only one instance of this login service being called because we sort of set it up that way in the application. And I can show sort of how that's done. Um, the injection of of these various services are sort of hierarchical from the parent uh, component, you know, down to its children. If a component declares it, if the parent component declares or um, requires that that login service be injected, the children also inherit, or the injection of that service to its children is also using that initial um, instantiation from the parent. So everybody has the same access to this login service the way that we've set it up. So um, when we do get items, all it's doing is it's creating this request option and it's just setting up these options. We have content type, application JSON, uh, it adds these headers to, to those requests, but we have authorization and it's using this login service get authentication token. So anytime we make a call, get items, it's setting up the headers appropriately. And all it's doing is it's, create, it's calling another resource called to do items, and it's using the get method. And again, we're converting anything that we get back from the server into JSON. And it just returns this as, this as an observable. So when we get back to our home TS, when it does um, to do service get items, you have a JSON item that is uh, returned from this observable and you just do items as the um, as a property that you're looking at and you're setting this to do items for this home component uh, and the way that we set things up we can go to the app module and see we've gone in and imported this login service this to do service this module here is important uh, and we import this HTTP module, but for the, the services that we created within our module, our project, we have this login service and to-do service, 
and this is where things sort of like this is where um, the application sort of declares that um, or the module declares that and any instance of this that's created is going to flow down to the child component including the app, the app itself the app component um, and on down there's a way that you can in the children you could go in and change and create your own instance of a service but you'd have to sort of um, declare that all right so um, that's a little bit of the code now I can we've seen how it behaves within uh, a web browser right everything is pre-populated so the username and password are correct this is how it behaves in the web browser next I'll sort of just give you a quick view of what it looks like uh, within the iPhone all right so let's go to my iPhone here and click on my to do or tap on my to do and you'll see that we've got the login screen we've got these other tabs so we primarily work within the login or the home screen we've added the login and we uh, tap on login after we've entered the names there and uh, this sort of behaves how you would expect it to behave uh, click on login and you'll see the little loading uh, notification or loading uh, control there and it'll also uh, load the to-do list uh, click on refresh and you'll see the getting items loading uh, GUI and you've got a list there and this is pretty straightforward this is talking to AWS to log in and, and get the to-do list all right, so uh, one recommendation I have, if you want to know what the back end or the API calls look like, uh, find me on YouTube. It's Apollo Cabrera. Obviously, you're on it already, but go to the videos uh, and check out a couple of these um, other videos. Go serverless with AWS, or there's a three-parter with uh, AWS. This I call it the LAMB stack, which is Lambda, Angular, and Mongo. Uh, but this sort of sh helps or this uh, shows how to um, what's behind those uh, that API gateway API it's got lambda going on it's got cognito uh, Mongo um, and some uh, for the angular part which is the, the web part it's got some um, angular and s3 uh, route 52 stuff going on so check that out um, hopefully you guys found something useful uh, in this video uh, let just leave a comment on uh, if you have any questions and I'll try to answer them as best as I can thank you guys